Uh, we are here for uh, this pre presentation, choosing the right agile methodology for your Drupal project. My name is Prabhat Sinha, and uh, I'm here along with my colleague, uh, Shani Mampi. So next slide is a simple introduction about this, us. Uh, uh, I'll introduce Prabhat. Prabhat uh, has been working in uh, product, um, products and projects for the past eight years. Um, in his free time, he can be found jogging and uh, just uh, socializing at the local parks. He lives in India, in New Delhi, with his wife and two kids. Yeah. And Sani has been managing product and project delivery since 1999, long while ago. And after work, you can find her on court shooting hoops with a local netball league. Uh, Sani lives in a suburban city in Israel <coughs> with her husband and four children. And it is a good thing that Sani has practiced a scrum kanban, a scrum band. She has been practicing since last uh, three, four years. So she would be able to give a more focus on all methodologies. So here is the simple agenda of this presentation. Uh, we will uh, run you through what is Agile, a simple intro, because we know, all of you know about Agile. Then we will uh, run through Agile frameworks, a scrum, kanban, a scrum band. I think these three are uh, widely used Agile frameworks. And then we will also discuss about extreme programming, lean, and feature-driven development. And we'll see how we can al also use this uh, for Drupal projects. Uh, after that, we will do a simple comparison of all the frameworks which we have included here. And last one would be the Cinefin uh, framework, of a popular <coughs> decision-making framework. So first, uh, what is Agile? So as you all know, that Agile brings more flexibility. It, it gives weightage to individ individuals and interactions over processes and tools, working software over comprehensive documentation, customer collaboration over contract negotiation, and receptive to change, responding to change as soon as possible. So here are the 12 principles of Agile Manifesto, and it is more about flexibility, team collaboration, sustainability. MVP is in the focus, like uh, minimum viable uh, product instead of documentation only. Uh, simplicity, so this is all about it. And uh, But Agile as a methodology only. You can't work with Agile because it doesn't give so <clears throat> there are several Agile project management frameworks uh, which are being used uh, in Drupal ecosystem. A Scrum Kanban, a Scrum Van, or as I said, are popularly used frameworks. Then we have extreme programming, lean development, and feature-driven development. So in next few slides, we will discuss about all these frameworks. So it is over to Sani for Scrum. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Hi, guys. Um, so, okay, we're not going to go into the details of what Scrum is. Uh, we're just going to take it from a high level um, beyond assuming that everybody knows. So the one thing I do like is that uh, Scrum, the word Scrum comes from rugby. Um, and we, most of us know this. And, uh, and I, this, um, this definition of it I found in the Oxford English Dictionary. And there's just something that I really like about it. Um, an ordered formation of players. I think really represents the cross-functioning team. Um, used to restart, and the scrum is used to restart play. C correlates to the sprints that we have at each point, uh, in which the forwards of a team form up with arms interlocked. And I see this as very much the scrum uh, team, the PO and the scrum master, linking arms, going together, and uh, and going forward, heads down, representing the no distractions that we have in Scrum, the, the objective to be that the team has no distractions, and push forward. Scrum doesn't work unless the whole team is, uh, is well, it's gone, oh, I don't know how to make it go back. <laughs> um, the whole team, it doesn't work, Scrum, if the whole team isn't on board and focused on, on going forward in the same direction. Um, the part about an opposite side doesn't really take effect, but, uh, but that's the definition of Scrum. Scrum in a nutshell. Uh, we have many processes and tools that we use to to uh, to work through the not just the sprint but all the preparation for the sprints. Uh, we have the sprint planning, the backlog refining, uh, the demo, the retrospects so to learn and to constantly maintain going forward. Um, we have the product backlog, 
scrum boards, different tools that can be can or cannot be used. Uh, it's optional uh, during uh, during the sprints. Uh, the team, product owner, essential part of the team. Uh, without it, I do see scrum as being a bit of a problem. Without a product owner, uh, a scrum master. Uh, as we know, it's fairly debatable whether a scrum master is actually required during uh, a scrum, but the objective is to make that person irrelevant almost, but a scrum master especially to start off with, and the team. Well-trained, specialised, self-managing, communicative, uh, ability to make decisions, common goal and self-improving. Uh, all the things that the team need to have. Again, putting together that common goal and, and, and achieving it. Um, the requirements for a scrum, to have a clear vision. Uh, there is an ability to have adaptability during that clean, clear vision, but once the scrum starts, uh, sorry, once the sprint starts, to stay on that goal, no distractions to the team during that time, and to stay focused. Um, uh, it would help if you have a backlog for at least two sprints. That way, there's a constant like life cycle and, uh, and always moving forward. Um, the objective being to have a, um, an MVP, um, sorry, a PSP or MMF for, a, for at the end of each sprint, something to show this is what the team did. Um, I'm aware this is difficult at some points, especially at the beginning, but always to work to that goal of having something to demo at the end of the, uh, at the, end of the sprint. When to choose Scrum, where the vision's clear, without, and, and, and I say this loosely, the vision has to be clear of where we're going, a long scale, like what is the objective in, in three, four months' time to get there. Flexibility along the way, Agile is designed to, for, to adapt for that flexibility, that is available in Scrum. Uh, the teams should, can, um, there can be changes, but once the team is in motion during the Scrum, during the sprint, uh, the, leave them. We can make changes as we go along, uh, but not during the sprint. Just keep on going, uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, the changes can come afterwards. Um, again, scrum projects can change direction as long as the product backlog is maintained and groomed. So, constant change, constant going forward. Those are the main things that I see in a scrum project. Uh, the team needs to be onboarded and committed. Stakeholders have to have the projects as a priority. It doesn't have to be their top priority, uh, but it does have to be in their, um, in their schedule that they are able to answer questions, be available to think about the project, and if there is a change to be done, to be available to give that change and give that feedback so that the team can continue to progress in the right direction even after a change. The team obviously has to have the skill set to, ma to manage the project, uh, so it's an essential. Um, and communicative. Um, I, I will add in here um, in, where we, we work in Accelerant and uh, we are a remote team. Uh, I'm based in Israel. Prabhat is based in India. We have people in Tokyo. We have people in the UAE. We have people in the States um, and a few other places. So what? Australia. 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 Um, so communication is essential and doable. There is, I'm not going to go into the tools. There are enough tools that the team can maintain communication. There's no reason that should stop for whatever reason, co-located or not co-located. Communication is a key, and, and we have proved that it doesn't matter where you are, it can be done. Uh, the output is to show something at the end of every sprint, have something to take back to the client and say, the stakeholders, this is what we did. You don't like it, that's fine, but this is what we did. Um, um, the team gets a full sprint, this is what I mentioned before, without any interruptions, no distractions. All distractions, project backlogs, things like that, part of the, the schedule, but when it comes to the actual sprint work, no bugs to be fixed that aren't in the plan, no changes, it's a short period of time, we'll work it out afterwards. Um, anything can be subject to change, and that's where Scrum really lives up to his name. You want to take camera? I think, oh, next one. Oh, yeah, I do. Sorry, my mistake. Okay, when does Scrum turn into Kanban or Scramban? Um, the sprint scope frequently changes. Priorities change, uh, emergency situations, clients not responsive, many different reasons. It's a sign that maybe Scrum isn't the right way to work. Maybe the team's okay with Scrum, but the stakeholders might not be. They are a contributing factor when choosing the right framework 
for uh, for uh, which agile framework and that is one of the things that is easily identifiable at the end of a sprint especially that maybe sp uh, scrum isn't working uh, the scope isn't clear or blocked um, again the whole point is to be able to have a couple of weeks back, uh, sprint backlog in uh, in the backlog and without that it means uh, there's no scope. If we have no backlog, there's no scope. So we need to know as a Scrum Master, you need to know what you're going to be doing next. Uh, so one or two steps ahead of yourself. If you don't have that visibility, then Scrum might not be the right way to go. Um, basic Scrum rules aren't enforced. Lack of communication, uh, lack of retrospects, L live and learn, w learn what your mistakes are, improve each time. Uh, the team should become on together I think a major part of Scrum is the ceremonies. And team is not dedicated actually. Like they are multitasking, and you want them to focus on uh, particular tasks or items. Yeah, that that would happen, especially if things are blocked or, or the scope isn't clear. They get distracted. Nobody wants idle uh, talents sat around doing nothing because scope isn't uh, ready, and then. They move on to another project, then their dedication, it, it's, it fluctuates, and then, again, Scrum can fail. Uh, release start to be, uh, releases are ad hoc. Uh, you're just releasing whenever you feel like it, whenever you feel from a development perspective it's relevant. That's not Scrum, okay? Um, no clear distinctions between project and product. Uh, it's a conflict between uh, the PO and the SM. So there's a reason those two uh, um, um, people who are members of the team to have the different aspects. One coming from the business side, one on the project development. Doesn't mean the Scrum Master can't also be a PO, but not in the same project. Um, addressing maintenance and support work. Given that maintenance and support has different and changeable priorities, Scrum also won't work because it will affect the, diff the content of the sprint each time. Team dedication is erratic. When you set what you're doing for the sprint, it is what you need to accomplish. It's what the client is expecting at the end of the sprint. Without that, uh, with the team not dedicated to achieving those things, and that means they can work on other projects, we can work percentage-wise, but they have to have the dedication to the project in order for it to go forward. Okay. Thank you, Sunny. So uh, I would introduce about Kanban a bit. Uh, Kanban, uh, as the name suggests, it is a visual signal and basically it is a Japanese word uh, uh, which uh, says that like card you can see and uh, Kanban was first introduced by Toyota uh, for their just-in-time production lines in 1950s. So uh, the most important part of Kanban is uh, this uh, board. I think this is pretty simple to work upon and we can simply manage our tasks here. Like uh, we can put our stories here and, and this column uh, we can also uh, put some items in to-dos, in progress. Important part is that we can limit work in, it uh, work in progress items. Like in progress, we can limit like there may be three, four items. First we will finish those or move it to the next column and then uh, we'll pick another stories from uh, the product backlog. So that really helps uh, even we, we are practicing it uh, for our support project and Accelerant and we are pretty happy with uh, this process. So I'll move to the next slide. So Kanban in a nutshell, uh, like sessions are same uh, uh, as, as as Scrum, you can say like meetings on a daily basis. And uh, basically for those who are converting from a Scrum, they go for it, uh, product backlog, uh, the uh, that also stories are here. You can pull from here so you can see like which stories are uh, available there and you can pull out from there. So that, that would be your product backlog. Tools, uh, Kanban board, uh, it, it is uh, being used extens extensively as a tool and WIP limit, as I talked about it uh, during introduction. So limiting the amount of WIP uh, really uh, works uh, in a pretty uh, manner. Like we can limit the things and we can ensure that things are first finished and then we are picking other items. And team, uh, basically, uh, they are technical teams uh, and as uh, needed. Uh, Kanban is also extensively used for support projects uh, in Drupal ecosystem. So basically uh, uh, front-end or back-end developers who are required for uh, that particular project are uh, picked uh, for it. And uh, the project philosophy, actually Kanban does not prohibit chance, uh, but neither it prescribed for it. So 
it is not uh, speaking about it ch about chins a lot, uh, but yeah, it is receptive to it. If you want to make chinses, if you want to adopt chinses, then it is fine. Uh, <coughs> Canvan encourages making incremental chinses, uh, like you can make chinses as and when require, required so that you can avoid drastic decrease uh, in pro productivity. Similarly, <coughs> small course corrections are also just easier than altering the complete process. And it focuses on uh, uh, the end-to-end -end project, like a vision is on the end project, like how soon we can uh, complete the project. So now, uh, when to choose Kanban? So basically, uh, Kanban, as I said, is uh, used for support and maintenance project uh, widely. Uh, like when, whenever you are running support, you can keep tickets and, and your backlog items, you can pull tickets from there, you can <clears throat> pull them into work in progress, you can then move it to the testing and so on. Or uh, then continuous flow, whenever <clears throat> we need a continuous flow of work items, we can pick Kanban as our uh, product methodology and <clears throat> uh, when the project requires the maximum flexibility and frequent change of priorities and a scope, uh, then again we can uh, pick uh, Kanban openness and like things are open, everyone can see uh, that board and uh, which team member is working on which item, uh, you can uh, definitely look into that. Ad hoc release required, when release dates are not uh, known actually, uh, basically for support projects you never know. Maybe one, one ticket takes two days for you, one ticket takes um, simply few hours for you. So <clears throat> based upon that, uh, now it is Sanish term for a scrum ban. So, it is a mix of a Scrum and Kanban. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so Scrumban actually is one of my personal favorites uh, because um, it takes a lot of the things that I like personally in Scrum and things that you have in Kanban and it equals Scrumban. This isn't officially defined anywhere. It's still unclear. Uh, but in my opinion, you're working in Scrum, you need to adapt. It's Scrumban. You like certain parts of Scrum and you just want to have ad hoc releases or anything like that, then this is your, uh, this is, this is your solution. So it's still in definition, um, you know, it's in the definition stages, but it's going to be anything you choose that isn't 100% Kanban and isn't 100% Scrum. Okay, and this is actually not unique to software development. Uh, there is a lot of things about using uh, Scrumban in, uh, in in the home with your children and things like that, that actually has a lot of interesting uh, ways of doing it. Um, so Scramban in a nutshell, uh, again, I really personally, uh, well, I think it's very important, the communication. Uh, so a lot of times you'll keep things up like the stand-ups, uh, daily communication, speaking to your team, knowing what they're working on. Uh, so technically that makes it a Scramban and not just Kanban. Uh, the retro, to enforce self-improvement, team improvement, uh, and reviews. Um, again, we can do ad hoc reviews, and that's cool, uh, but you can also plan the reviews. Uh, I personally am working with, in a project that was pure Scrum for the, about the first five sprints, and the last seven sprints, we moved over to Scrumban. Uh, we used a Kanban board to see what, where things are at, uh, but we, we, and we kept our demos with the client, but um, uh, due to issues of a response from the client to close all the UAT items before the end of uh, the sprint, the client wasn't responsive. Uh, getting clear information on, for the backlog, the client wasn't responsive. Not blaming the client, it's their priorities. Uh, but this meant that we could no longer keep Scrum. We kept having sprint two was still full of UAT tickets. So we were failing in Scrum, but the team wasn't failing in, in progressing forward. And so we just moved it to Scrumban, adapting. That's the main thing with Agile, is just to keep in the name of adaptation, learning and keep moving forward. So um, with the tools, I do use a Kanban board. Uh, in a few cases, I don't do ad hoc releases. We keep, it, uh, we keep it structured in the same way that Scrum is, but you can choose to do the Kanban way and ad have ad hoc releases. Uh, continuous flow. Um, even though we do define when the sprint ends because we have a demo uh, in the code, we have, uh, um, you know, we do say it's sprint 11, it's sprint 12. Uh, we do have that just for structure, uh, but technically we do work on a continuous flow. Sometimes we take less priority tickets due to high priority items not being blocked uh, for whatever reasons. Um, again, unlike Scrum, the team pulls the tickets, so that means 
although we didn't define it at the beginning of the sprint, they just pull the tickets when, if and when they need them. So again, contradicting to Scrum, where it's predefined at the beginning of the sprint, what they're going to work on. Um, no, no, we do grooming ad hoc uh, when, the, when the requirements come in, in the case that I have in mind. Uh, there's no reason not to do planning. If you have the information, and you can do a plan, uh, even if you, is, you know, is, is say, these are the next priority tickets. I would love to do planning in this project. So you would most likely sponsor wide sprint that can put priorities, and then as the sprint presented to more and more people You see, the, the problem with the, with the way the, the, we don't define, when, we don't mark the end of the sprint by, uh, yes, we have a demo, but the, dem the end of the sprint is on a Monday, on a, a start of a sprint is on a Monday. So we just start the week. Yes, guys, it was a new sprint. Um, so any uh, merge requests need to have the code so we know when it was done. But we don't have, um, we just have priority. We don't have, unfortunately, in this case, we don't have the ability to, to groom them and be ready and say, this is what we're going to accomplish in this day. We don't even have that visibility. We're living hand to mouth with regards to development. So this allows the flexibility to do that. But personally, I would love to do some planning meetings. <laughs> so that's, uh, but you can. Again, there's no reason why you can't and choose your different reasons to choose that part of Scrum, yes. This part of Kanban, yes. That part of Scrum, no etc cetera, etc cetera. that's why it's not defined and I wonder if it'll ever be defined because it's just take what you know of both and see how it works for your team for your project and move forward um, grooming on demand we do grooming on demand again uh, this is a, a perfect example when only when we get things unblocked by the client can we do the grooming so we're 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 stuck until then again uh, the, t the team shouldn't be idle so they pull the tickets that they can uh, work on. Um, again, like Scrum, it needs to have a cross-functional team. Uh, I do see this as a, um, I didn't actually put it in, oh yeah, it's here. Like, I see the top part as the Scrum, uh, and this is the ban, so Scrum ban uh, in, in, in most cases. But again, adapt it to what you need it to do. Um, the project philosophy, Again, it's the same agile philosophy. The roles, the work processes, the better flows, and the, and the flexibility, um, and all under the title of constant improvement. So as long as we're constantly improving and we're, and we're agile, then we're still working in the agile methodology. Uh, when to choose Scrum Ban. So when everything is unstable and you can't maintain Scrum, basically, and you find the solution to not being able to maintain the Scrum within Kanban. We have Scrum Ban. Uh, the, project's not re uh, re um, the project is not flexible. Hold on. When the project requires the maximum flexibility and frequent changes of priority. Uh, so client says they want one thing, the next day they want something else. With Scrum, we would close the door and say, no, talk to me in two weeks or three weeks. With Scrum Ban, we can stop. Uh, with Kanban, we can stop. Therefore, with Scrum Ban, we can stop. Uh, the goals are not clearly defined, again, not allowing us to plan. Uh, constantly evolving of the product, which is great. Uh, this can actually, be, involving of the product can be also done in Scrum quite easily. Uh, but, you know, um, uh, if it evolves too quickly, then it will move out of Scrum. Uh, and the sprint planning isn't happening. Um, another reason Scrum would fail would be management not involved. The whole team could be working with Scrum, but like I said, with the, the client or the stakeholders having it as a priority, if uh, the project is a priority, if they don't, Scrum will fail. Uh, and we won't be able to close off sprints. Cold heart, we've finished it. The client agrees with it. There's no issues. Uh, and you ha with Scrum, and you can uh, pour it over to the next so-called sprint. Um, any Kanban project that you're working on that needs a slight bit more structure will also fall into Scrum Ban because you'll be doing the opposite. You'll be working in Kanban, but you need, um, you need the planning, you need the daily stand-up, you need the retrospect. Uh, so technically that would be a Scrum Ban. Um, and the team isn't focused. Scrum will also fail. If the team's not focused to do what they want to do, what they need to do for that uh, sprint, then uh, Scrum won't, uh, won't, uh, won't help. Extreme programming. <laughs> yeah. So extreme programming is uh, really a lesser used uh, framework for Drupal ecosystem at least. Uh, but yeah, let's uh, discuss about it. 
so uh, this is another agile development framework and it is focused more on uh, software quality and responsiveness it is a code first approach so code is uh, in the forefront and we also do uh, testing uh, testing is also on the forefront of uh, extreme programming uh, it has also given uh, uh, it has also used a few software engineering uh, methodologies like uh, test driven development has been used ex extensively for extreme programming and uh, there are few other elements uh, like uh, uh, peer programming uh, integration uh, collective ownership and several other things uh, we will uh, discuss on uh, next few slides so moving to the next so as i said that extreme programming is a code first approach to software delivery and uh, emphasizes on four basic activities like coding testing listening and designing so here in the diagram you can see like uh, coding uh, as uh, is the main part of this we first code then we uh, go for other things we also do pair programming we do refactoring of codes so sometimes uh, this is also uh, said that uh, probably extreme programming is not that popular because of this code first uh, thing here and uh, uh, again as i said that extreme programming brought testing at the forefront of delivery process uh, uh, like test driven development and automated test driven development and practices like automated testing, refactoring, continuous integration, uh, test-driven development uh, has been used extensively in extreme uh, programming. So uh, here are uh, advantages and disadvantages of extreme programming. So advantages are uh, pair programming under XP helps in writing better code because two programmers are writing on the same piece of code. So definitely uh, your code is going to be <clears throat> very much effective and productive uh, with uh, less bugs into that. Uh, again, increased team accountability. So uh, every code base is uh, given to the team, and team is uh, uh, like responsible for uh, managing the quality on that. Uh, similarly, extreme programming manages risks in a better way uh, because we are working uh, on the code in a better way. We are uh, maintaining quality on that. We are also... <clears throat> Uh, using test-driven development, and apart from that, we are also doing continuous integration. So, iterations here are uh, mostly of one week, and it is uh, integrated into the uh, main uh, code base, and it is easy to accommodate changes. So, another advantage of extreme programming, like, uh, uh, it is very much receptive to changes. Uh, at any point of time, uh, changes are... <clears throat> Uh, accepted and uh, they are in integrated into the uh, main uh, development process. Now let's discuss about the disadvantages. Uh, so detailed planning is required uh, right since the inception uh, due to changing a scope. As I said that it is very much receptive to changes. So uh, at, at any point of time if changes are coming then we have to estimate like how much extra time it would take. So right from the scratch we have to plan in a way so that we can accommodate changes or maybe we can also let client know right right uh, since the start that whenever you will come with the change request we will let you know about the est estimations and all uh, then xp does not have a set measurement plan or quality ass assurance for coding so apart from all this software engineering methodologies like uh, uh, continuous integration and all there is not a set measurement plan so that is why sometimes of uh, extreme programming fails. Uh, pair programming may lead to too much duplication of code and data. Mm -hmm. And apart from it, it also takes efforts, like uh, two programmers are working on the same piece of work, so it means you we are spending more time uh, uh, in doing a piece of the work. So XP is more code-centric uh, than design, which may cause UI UX issues. As I said, that code is in the forefront, so uh, UI UX issues are usually <clears throat> ignored and which may create a kiosk later on. So XP in a nutshell here, uh, process and tools, pair programming, uh, it is an important fact of uh, XP basically. Release plan, uh, iteration plan uh, is uh, one uh, plan which is used there where we plan about the iteration, the sort iteration, usually it is of one week and we plan like what uh, features or what 
uh, items we will pick into that iteration. Uh, then project velocity, it is uh, measured at the, at the end of the uh, iteration, like how much velocity we can achieve. Uh, then iteration, as I said, usually it is of one week long. Practices, uh, we use uh, test-driven development, continuous integration, collective code ownership. Uh, team size, uh, usually five or less, and team members are trackers. Customer is uh, very much important here in extreme programming, and it is equivalent to product owner uh, and a scrum. So customer is the one who assigns tasks uh, to team, mem team members. It is not like a scrum, the team members are picking uh, tasks their own as per their convenience. Rather, customer is assigning uh, tasks to all team members. Uh, then few other team members are programmer, tester, and coach. And again, as we discussed, the project philosophy is code first, refactoring as done so many times. Simple designs are used uh, because focus is more on code and spike solutions. <clears throat> so now, when to use? XP. Uh, so um, basically, when uh, we have reached up to a maturity, uh, most of the time, what happens? Like uh, we have done most part of the coding, and we have to move into the complicated uh, part of coding where a lot of focus and quality is required. Then we can move into XP uh, at that point of time. Uh, similarly, when we require maximum flexibility and frequent change of priorities, uh, then uh, again we can use XP. Uh, uh, multiple releases per week or per day. As I said, that iterations are uh, very short and continuous integration is uh, promoted here in extreme programming. So like that, whenever we want to have multiple releases, uh, we can use it. Uh, have many unscheduled releases. Uh, same uh, like uh, when we don't know about the uh, releases, uh, we are just working on the tasks uh, and items. And once it is done, maybe we can <coughs> integrate with it with the code. And uh, when we have less cross-functional teams. So now it is over to Sani for lean development. Thank you. Okay. So lean development uh, was adopted uh, in 2000. Uh, there's books on it, as there are on everything. Um, um, the Lean also works based on, on uh, a kind of Kanban board with different emphasis. The emphasis changes, uh, you know, uh, to, to different priorities. There is still the objective to have sustainability uh, and, and, be, and smart development and obviously success. Uh, but the main difference is, is that... Um, it crashed. Um, the main difference is, is that it's more focused on... Um, Hold on, my brain just goes values and ROIs, basically. Yeah, ROI. Yeah, it's very good for startups because it's uh, you build less so uh, to what you can do, but what will provide you the fastest and the best ROI. Uh, it's mainly focused. It's mainly spoken about on for startups, but it can be applied um, whenever, whenever the focus is to get the ROI, uh, um, to get ROI on what you're working on, and less priority on on uh, a whole product in the end. So it's a small, um, small increments of success. Uh, I think it would be a more fitting way to say it. Still works on the cross-functioning team. Uh, it doesn't have any best practices, uh, technical practices uh, defined for it. Um, it's, it's matrix, it's external matrices that, that, uh, that, you know, what will give us the money back on what we're working on, not what can we resolve, what can we do. The, the bit is more from a business side. Uh, the business wants to see money coming back for the development that's done, and priorities will be according to that. Um, in a nutshell, again, you can apply uh, daily stand-up meetings. Communication is just always essentially in agile and, uh, and reviews cause so that we can, uh, we can learn and, and improve. Uh, the tools are cumulative, fro excuse me, cumulative flow, uh, diagrams, uh, visual controls, and the Kanban board. Uh, the Kanban board, if we go back, um, it has different. You have the problem, you have the solution. You can have in the solution how much it's going to cost to, re to do that solution. Obviously, that is needed in order to measure the ROI, uh, the key metrics, and the cost structure. Uh, so it's uh, a slight, it's, it's a different, it, the board looks the same, but the titles are different. Um, yeah, so, it is more business oriented. 
a lot more business orientated, coming from, from above. <laughs> uh, iterations, again, can be according to, according to what you, you're planning. Uh, there's no set rule. There's no three weeks, two weeks, as need be. It's also not ad hoc, as you want. Um, the team needs to be well-trained, specialised. Again, all the things that Agile has seems to be constant, well-trained, self-managing and communicative. Uh, the creek principles are to, that it eliminates waste, um, it creates knowledge, it defers commitments, fast delivery, and respects uh, respects people. Respect people. <laughs> yeah. And optimization as a whole. Uh, so that that's basically lean in a nutshell. And over to Pravat. So last one in a row: feature driven de development and. It is basically uh, a uh, software development process uh, which has feature in the forefront. Like uh, we do everything uh, based upon feature, uh, and feature-driven development was introduced in the year 1999 in a book named Java Modeling in Color with UML. So, <clears throat> as the name suggests, feature are an important aspect of, of feature-driven development, and they are primary source. Like uh, uh, similar to User stories in a Scrum. We use feature uh, to track things, uh, even in the product backlog or whatever backlog we make there. Uh, we use feature uh, there, and feature is a small client-valued function expressed in the form. Uh, this form is important, like action, result, and object. So uh, this is a simple diagram of feature-driven development. How it works? Like initially, we develop an overall model. Uh, architecture-based uh, uh, framework, uh, it is, uh, it shows here, and we build a feature list uh, here, all all list of features so that we can track on the basis of that. Uh, here, one, once feature list is done, we plan by the <coughs> feature, like which features we will include in which release cycle, and once planning is done, we go for design by feature, uh, like we design, us design the feature architecture part of it and then build the build by feature. So I'll move quickly to the next slide. Advantages and disadvantages of feature driven development. So uh, biggest advantage of feature driven development that it supports mul multiple teams working in parallel because we can assign uh, different teams on different features. They can work parallelly on, on their stuffs and later on it can be integrated into one part. All aspects of project track by feature. So as I said, that you, instead of user stories and Scrum, here in, in FTD, we use a feature to track everything. So design by feature and build by feature aspects are easy to understand and adopt. So it is visibly uh, convenient for all, all the team members. They can easily understand what they have to do, and they can work accordingly. Similarly, it scales to large teams. So usually feature-driven uh, development supports large number of team, 50, 50 is the normal size of a feature-driven development uh, project. Uh, you can go up to any, any number in that. So that is uh, flexibility given by FTT. Uh, so disadvantages promotes individual code ownership as opposed to shared ownership. So uh, it, it, it would happen uh, because like uh, several teams are working parallelly on uh, several steps, then uh, ownership would be would remain with <clears throat> one individual or maybe a few individuals. So uh, that kind of shared ownership is not available here, uh, uh, which actually Agile does not promote, and iterations are not as well defined by the process. So because we are working on features and we don't know uh, exact time to complete those most of the times. So iterations are not fixed here, like uh, in other Agile methodologies, like in a Scrum or uh, Canvan or wherever. We have uh, defined iterations, but here we can't do that. Similarly, the model-centric as aspect can have huge impacts when working on existing systems that have no models. So like if we are <clears throat> migrating from any other existing agile uh, methodology to feature de de development, uh, then probably that may be problematic for us. So here, FTD in a nutshell, uh, so processes and tools uh, like so uh, as we discussed uh, on the last slide, we develop an overall model uh, architecture and build 
a feature list, plan by feature, design by feature, build by feature. And uh, practices are domain object modeling, high level class diagram we make here uh, sh so that <coughs> uh, things can be uh, put there and uh, we, we can uh, track on the basis of that. Developing by feature, individual class ownership, uh, reporting visibility of reports. Team uh, is uh, widespread here. Uh, there's no set uh, team in feature-driven uh, development. Project manager, chief architect, development manager, chief programmer, domain experts, all kind of roles are there. There are uh, several supporting roles too. And project philosophy is uh, like multiple teams working on the same project, tracking through features and model-centric approach. So comparison table, uh, Sani, uh, maybe you can speak oh, about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, okay, in, so in, in a nutshell, okay. yeah. Okay, so j just to summarize everything uh, up of the different uh, elements, uh, there's a lot of similarities between um, Kanban and Scrumban. Um, and the Scrum seems to offer more structure and more refined rules. So when uh, in the comparison, you can see the artifacts, you have many artifacts uh, for Scrum, less so on the Kanban and Scrumban style, um, um, excuse me, frameworks. Uh, so that, again, when you're making a decision of what to choose, it's important to know what uh, artifacts you're going to have, because if you, can, if you do have them all, then yes, you can take, uh, you can take Scrum. And if you don't, then you need to find what fits to you, whether it be the Kanban or the Scrumban. Um, the board, at the beginning of a sprint, your board, or the end of a sprint, your board should be empty and you're starting anew uh, with the sprints on Scrum. Um, but with Kanban, and, and this was, for me, one of the major reasons why uh, we moved to Scrumban, the board is, con is con in continuous use. So what you thought you would take on at the beginning of the sprint but you didn't until three sprints later, that's fine. That's, that, that works for Scramban and Kanban. With sprint, everything should be completed and clean slate and moving on. Uh, ceremonies, again, with Kanban and Scramban, do what's good for you, do what you need, uh, but, sprint, um, but Scrum requires that you do the ceremonies in order to make uh, the next sprint work. Uh, teams and roles. Um, most say, you know, you should have some kind of scrum master, agile coach, something like that to lead the team uh, um, through, you know, not someone who's not technical or not necessarily technical. Um, um, in, in scrum, very, cl very clearly defined roles, product owner. Without it, things can get complicated. Uh, scrum master, although the objective is not to have one because everyone's self-managing, at least for the start, someone to give uh, the structure to the sprint. Um, uh, for Kanban and Scrum, this is optional. I do, uh, it is recommended to some, have some agile coach, otherwise you just kind of have a board on a wall and a few people talking around it. So uh, someone to give it some kind of structure. Uh, iterations, uh, sprints as we know, um, and Kanban and Scrumban, again, we, Kanban as you wish, and Scrumban like we do, uh, or I've chosen to do, is to have, to maintain those uh, iterations, but with a lot of flexibility. Uh, task assignment, Scrum, predefined. Everyone gets what they need to do at the end, at the beginning of the sprint. Um, and with Kanban and Scrumban, it's pulled. And with Scrumban, you can push and pull. Uh, prioritization uh, is part of the backlog grooming session uh, ceremony with uh, with uh, the PO. Uh, with Kanban, it's, uh, it's as you want. Um, and it, the backlog just needs priority. Uh, so as long as you know what's the main thing you want to work on, you're all right. Uh, but again, this has the challenge of always having the high priority uh, items groomed, defined, estimated, whatever it needs to be in order for the developer to take it up and start working on it. Um, there's many performance metrics that you can be used in, in, uh, in Scrum, the burn down charge, velocity. Uh, I have actually kept velocity. Um, like measurements, the capacity of the team. I think that helps when defining in Kanban and in Scrumban. Scrumban, uh, it helps to know how much work in progress tickets they should have, uh, what their limits should be. Uh, and I luckily had that information from when working with Scrum uh, and, and maintained it going over to Kanban and to Scrumban. Um, so, and then Prapat will do this one. Oh, really? <laughs> okay, so uh, again, extreme programming, uh, you have a release plan, uh, an iteration plan, 
Um, there's uh, the, the there's artifacts, the features, uh, high level diagrams for uh, for FDD, and uh, Lean is again also like Kanban, more cumulative flow diagram, virtual Kanban board, not virtual a Kanban board. Um, um, extreme programming like Scrum has a clean slate at the start of the sprint. Um, FDD has a feature board, and uh, Lean has the Kanban board. Ceremonies as you wish. You know, uh, there's no um, extreme programming has them in place, but I think it's quite it's, it's got the flexibility uh, to do it as as uh, as what fits to your team. I think that's going to be when choosing the right framework. It's what fits to your team and to your project objective that always has to be at uh, the forefront of your mind. Iterations are incremental. Uh, iterations for FDD are feature driven, hence the name. Um, and uh, and uh, for Lean, it's a constant stream as, uh, as business defines, really. Um, extreme programming, unlike any others, uh, the task is assigned by the client or the customer. Um, and for the others, it's a pull. A uh, majority of Agile is actually a pull uh, uh, from the team member themselves to choose what they want to work on next. Obviously, having whatever, pri whatever the basis of the prioritization is, that is a clear indicator on the ticket, on the card, whatever, so they know not to, ta to take what's relevant, not just what they want. Um, prioritization is done by the client for extreme programming, uh, hence them allocating the tickets makes the most logical sense. And... Uh, and uh, for FDD, it's done by the project manager uh, or architect, uh, according to the, the feature that is being worked on. And lean development is, again, by the business, uh, what will provide the ROI. And uh, very similar matrix, the burn down charts, um, the lean and cycle time and cumulative flow uh, for both FDD and lean development. So... These are the methodologies. These are, well, under the Agile methodology, these are the different frameworks. Um, you know, the advantages and disadvantages. Um, the question is, what is the right methodology for you? Uh, Papa is going to talk about Cinefen to, to, uh, to help us uh, f go through a flow of how, how we can make that decision. Oh. Okay, yeah. So Cinefin uh, is a very popular uh, decision-making framework. Uh, it has been used by George Bush administration too uh, for analyzing policy and uh, the impact of release and in process. So it describes problem, situation, and system uh, with the help of research. And uh, further, it explores relationship uh, between context, experience, and the person to propose new approaches to communication decision-making. So basically, uh, it has been adopted recently uh, for agile decision making and picking right methodology uh, as far as agile is concerned. There are five uh, domains, obvious, complicated, complex, chaotic, and disorder. Uh, we will discuss about four of uh, it one by one. So here is uh, the picture. Uh, like In this picture, we can see uh, about all the four domains which are in use, uh, obvious, uh, complicated, complex, and chaotic. Now here, <coughs> obvious uh, is where we can sense, categorize, and respond. So uh, like uh, uh, identifying problem, we can easily ad identify like what is the problem, and we can also quickly pick what is the solution for that problem. So. It may be simple support uh, tickets where we know like how we can fix it. Uh, so again, no analysis is required there because we know the best practices uh, and we need to follow a standard operating procedures. So here uh, we can use uh, any any framework, anything, whatever we are uh, continuously using, uh, we can go ahead with that. I, I don't think we need to <clears throat> make any further change into our processes there. Uh, next comes to complicated, where we have to sense, analyze, and respond. So here, a uh, problem we are uh, able to uh, understand, uh, but solution we have to sense, we have to uh, uh, think about it, and uh, then we have to do analysis uh, and respond. So in such cases, uh, like cause and effect are separated over time and space. It, it happens like sometimes uh, any solution works for us, but later on, uh, when we try to repeat it, it, it didn't work for us. So maybe uh, 
in such cases we have to do the analysis we have to uh, think about uh, the present situation and how we can do uh, in a better way so here we can uh, use uh, kanban uh, uh, kanban uh, is a good uh, framework for uh, this purpose uh, where we can uh, keep our uh, tasks in, in the backlog items and we can pull from there and we can work upon that. Uh, next one would be complex. Here we have to probe, sense and respond. So we have to uh, think about uh, uh, the solutions. We, uh, we have to think about the other situations and uh, we have to sense on the basis of that like what would be the uh, right solution. Uh, for example, a Scrum, in a Scrum projects, we make decisions like this should, this should be the, our uh, back-end part, this should be the, uh, our <clears throat> front-end part, and how we can collaborate things together uh, to provide a right solution. So again, cause and effect seen in retrospect and do not repeat. Uh, it, it is visible, but it, it doesn't repeat. It, it changes over the time, and uh, <clears throat> we have to use emergent practices for it. So next I will move to kiosks. So here where we are not able to understand what would be the right solution, act, sense, respond is, is the key there. Like we have to act, keep on acting, we have to uh, keep on <clears throat> trying uh, for the solution and respond on the basis of that. So uh, extreme programming is uh, one, one of the uh, framework uh, which we discussed about we can use here uh, for kiosks uh, domain of uh, Cinefin uh, because we can keep on trying uh, with uh, the best practices uh, uh, where we can manage a better code quality and uh, test driven development and think about the solution. <laughs> so noble practices are discovered here. Every time we get a solution for it, that is noble and that is uh, phenomenal uh, for everyone. So. This is the end of our presentation, and if you have any question, then, yeah. <laughs> any questions? Cool. All right. Thanks, okay. everyone. Okay, thank you. Thank you.